Hello and welcome back to the channel. Are you looking for a solid GMT watch that looks way more expensive than it really is? Which also is a homage to the famous Rolex GMT Master 2 and can be purchased for under 80 US dollars. Well, I think I have an almost perfect candidate for such a watch here and it is Parnas GMT. I purchased this watch a few months ago and after spending some time with it, I think I'm now ready for an in-depth review. Hi and welcome to the Shiny Things channel. If you are new here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. It does help for our channel to grow and bring you reviews like this. Also, the links to where you can find the watch in this video are in the description below. So, let's get into it. Rolex GMT Master 2 evolved in mid-80s from the GMT Master model which was developed in cooperation with Pan American Airways and first launched in 1954. Since its introduction, the watch developed a strong following and Rolex GMT Master II is considered a grail watch by many. So it comes as no surprise that it didn't take long for other watch brands to have a go at capitalizing on the great popularity of the Rolex GMT Master II and putting out for sale various homages to this watch. But when it comes to the best value for your buck, it is really hard to beat this Panis GMT. In this video, we will look at all-round overview of this watch, its strong points and, of course, what could have been done better. So let's start with some basics. Diameter – just over 40 mm. Height of this watch is around 13 mm. Lug width is 20 mm, lug tip to lug tip is just under 48 mm, which makes it quite comfortable on the wrist. Bracelet tapers down to around 16 mm, and width of the clasp is 18 mm. Parnis managed to squeeze a number of quality materials into this watch. Solid link stainless steel bracelet ceramic insert bezel and sapphire crystal, which is remarkable taking into account the price. I have to note though, it does not look like there was any anti-reflective coating applied, not an issue for me personally, again taking into account the price of this watch. For the date window, Parnist used a magnified cyclop. The cyclop does the job quite nicely at about two and a half times magnification, which is coincidentally the same as on Rolex. This time I have a diamond test tool here, so we can actually test the sapphire crystal. Let's go ahead and do it now. Okay, so what I have here, I have a tester, I have my watch, and I have my trusted Pagani Design Diver, which I know for the fact has hard legs, also known as mineral crystal. So as you can see, it's now set to between one, between two and three bars just about two bars. If we put it against the hard legs, it gives you sure three bar reading and uh, sometimes returns to two, sometimes it doesn't. However, if we put it against this watch, yeah, it definitely goes into the hard glass territory. And again, just one bar here and Yep. So, here you have it. <laughs> Let's have a look at the dial now. It is nice, deep piano black. I like the reflectivity of the dial. It gives it a bit of a depth, in my opinion. The indices are applied, similar to the Rolex watch. Of course, this is not a white gold, as used in Rolex GMT Master. However, pretty decent execution. There is loom. And as usual with this price point, the loom is not great, but it is a little bit better than the Pagani Design Submariner homage I reviewed not so long ago. I will put a loom shot at the end of the video. There is a minute chaptering at the edge of the dial, familiar Mercedes hour hand, and I like how the second hand and the GMT hand stretches, stretch all the way to the edge of the chaptering. Thank you Rolex for a wonderful design. To punish credit though, I have to say, everything aligns. 
which is a big bonus in this budget price segment. As you can see, I chose a sterile dial version, mainly because I'm not a big fan of Parnis logo visual design, but this is very much a personal preference. I, in retrospect, I would probably prefer a signed crown, which only seems to appear on the watch with a logo. So if you fancy one with a logo, go right ahead. Parnas will even put a touch of color for the GMT lettering at the bottom of the dial, which plays quite well with the color of the GMT hand. Let's have a look at the bezel now. This watch features a ceramic insert bezel, which is so much less prone to scratches, which in reality means that your watch will stay looking great for much, much longer. Bezel action is pretty good, I like the sound, they got it spot on in my opinion, sounds quite satisfying and again, everything aligns. As I mentioned in the unboxing video of this watch, on this particular watch the bezel is 108 clicks, a bit odd, however it is enough to adjust the bezel to the third time zone if you want to. Also a lot of viewers commented that theirs had 120 clicks as it should, so quite possible that my watch is a really odd one out. There is a bit of a play, but nothing major, nothing that I would be concerned about taking into account the price of this watch. Looking at the case, it has mirror polish on the sides and brushed on the top of the lugs. Quality of the polishing and brushing is very decent in my opinion. I came across the watches in the $1000 plus dollar price band with lower quality brushing, so well done Parnis. Case back is solid, no engravings or any other decorations, very much in line with the Rolex watches. The watch features a screw down crown protected by the crown guards. Because I chose a sterile version, as I mentioned earlier in the video, there is no logo on the crown. However, if you go for a version with a logo, there is a cursive P for Parnis on the crown. An interesting detail, you can see a black O-ring rubber gasket when you unscrew the crown. A good touch, I believe it is similar to one that Rolex has. If anything, it will help for better dust protection and waterproofing. And now we come to the bracelet. This is an interesting part. Since the Basel World 2019, Rolex announced a new version of the Batman GMT Master 2. And it only comes, you guessed it, on a Jubilee bracelet. Well, guess what? Parnis didn't waste any time and almost immediately started offering the variation with a bracelet that resembles a Rolex Jubilee. I have to command Parnis' agility in this respect. Taking a closer look at the bracelet, we can see a solid end links, which comply to the shape of the case and have very similar quality of brushing. The center links are polished, the bracelet in general is quite decent, good tolerances, it feels quality and doesn't sound readily or cheap. Also Panis managed to use the screw links, which is really punching above its weight in this price category. And then we get to the clasp. Well, Parnis is really good at manufacturing decent quality homage watches on a budget. But hey, when it comes to designing something of their own, I'm not so sure. Don't get me wrong, the clasp is solid, works well and feels very sturdy. It is a full milled clasp. It even has a quick set extension that can be adjusted on the fly to add 5mm to the length of the bracelet. All sounds great on paper, but when it comes to execution, well, it lacks that refinement. When closed, it has a slightly awkward shape and some reviewers mentioned that it wasn't the most comfortable to wear. From my Personal experience, it actually didn't make any difference, but that could have been just me. Also, the way the clasp opens, or rather not fully opens, is also slightly awkward. 
Having said all the above, you might prefer to wear this watch on the leather strap or you can purchase a different good quality clasp or the full bracelet to replace this one for a few dollars on AliExpress. So in reality, I don't think this is by no means a showstopper. There is actually a fully functional GMT movement in this watch. And after doing a bit of a research, it looks like it is a Chinese DG3804 movement, which is the GMT version of a DG2813, which is in turn based on the Japanese Miyota 8215 movement with an added hacking complication. For those who are not familiar with the hacking complication, it is an ability to stop the second hand while you set up the time. It is very widely used movement with acceptable accuracy. Of course, it is always a bit of a touch and go because you are relying on the Panis Parnis quality control, which is not always great. And I consider myself a bit lucky with this watch because I used it for a few months and I've got plus two to three seconds a day accuracy, which is quite impressive. Is it going to last? I'm not sure. However, these movements are quite cheap and you can get a completely new one for only for a few bucks. So if you want to service it, just replace it in a couple of years. That's probably what I would do. In conclusion, I think this watch is a very good value proposition if you are looking for a budget, fully functional GMT homage to Rolex GMT Master 2. Yes. The clasp is a bit awkward, yes, the quality control is not always the best, and yes, the loom is poor, but for under 80 US dollars you still get sapphire crystal, ceramic insert bezel, screw down crown, solid screwed bracelet, milled clasp with on the fly extension, and the fully functional GMT complication. I think it is a compelling package for the price. Thank you for watching, please hit that subscribe button if you want to see more reviews like this one and of course hit that like button or the other one if you feel that way, we appreciate the feedback. Thank you for tuning in, all the best and till the next time, goodbye.